All right, the, I'm going to convert a 12 inch wheel kids bike into a balance bike or what is called a strider bike uh, by removing the cranks and the chain or at least securing the chain from bouncing around while the kid is riding the bike. This bike was given to us, it was free, uh, it's 12 inch tires and so it's a pretty standard kids bike. I've done this with a 16 inch wheel bike or a 20 inch wheel bike. The procedure would be the same. You're going to need some basic tools, uh, nothing really out of the ordinary. If you find that there are bolts that are stuck, um, use liquid wrench. You can get this at any auto parts place uh, worth its salt. Um, WD-40, pretty much worthless. Uh, worthless as a penetrating oil, worthless as a lubricant. I know it's a household name, but um, don't bother with it. Liquid wrench is much, much better and about the same price. The basic tools you'll need, you'll need some duct tape if you don't want to remove the chain. This will be used to secure the uh, chain to the bike to keep it out of the kid's way and to keep their pants from getting greasy. A 13 millimeter wrench, that will be used for adjusting the height of the seat when you're done. That's pretty standard. Usually the seat bolt is either 12 or 13 millimeter. A 15 millimeter wrench is used for removing the pedals and almost all the bolts that hold back wheels on the bikes, regardless of their wheel size, um, they use a 15 millimeter wrench to secure the wheels in the back. On the front, it's sometimes a 15 millimeter, sometimes a 14 millimeter. If you want to remove the chain, uh, my advice, spend $20, go to a bike store and buy yourself a chain removal tool. Uh, the way it works is just a simple vise that presses the pin out of the chain link and then can be turned around and press it back into place when you're done. Now there's a bit of a trick to doing that which I won't be covering in this video but uh, I've actually done it with this chain and because I work on bikes a lot and have six kids I have one of these tools. Um, they're super handy but you don't need it for this particular. It's an option. Um, you'll need a large crescent wrench. This is not a small one, it's a fairly big one. A long handle, lots of leverage. You may need that for removing the cranks. And then two types of screwdrivers. Um, a regular head screwdriver. This has a fairly small head and then that's a number four Phillips head screwdriver, sorry, number two Phillips head screwdriver. Um, and that is used for removing the chain guard, which I've already done on this bike. This will be used a little bit later on to finish removing the cranks. So our chain guard has been removed. I've put down a towel, um, it's an old bath towel that uh, I put down and this is done for two reasons. Uh, I love my wife, I don't want to make a mess on the floor, that's reason number one, probably the most important, but also there are ball bearings on the inside of the parts of the bike that we'll, we'll be removing. And these ball bearings have a tendency to fall out and roll all over the place, the towel keeps them from rolling over the place. When you do this you will also want a plastic bag, usually a gallon size bag or a quart size bag for the bearings, at least temporarily if you need it. And I'm actually going to take these things off. I'll reassemble them off of the bike to keep everything together and I put them in a box and put them on a shelf and save them for later because I want to re reassemble this bike if my kid gets good at riding the bike uh, without the, um, the chain and um, without the uh, chain and crank. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the bike around. One word to anyone who does this on the non-chain side of the bike, that is the left side of the bike, all the bolts, normally when you tighten them up, you turn them clockwise. But because they, the manufacturers don't want the pedals and the cranks to loosen while you're riding, they are actually threaded in reverse. So when you want to tighten the bolt, you turn it counterclockwise to tighten, and to loosen the bolts, you turn it clockwise. And the same would be true for the pedals. So in this case, the pedal, when it comes off, is actually turned in a counterclockwise direction. Now, one word, or sorry, it's turned in the clockwise direction, not in the counterclockwise. The pedals, when you take them off, these are badly rusted, but actually on the end of the axle is stamped an L and an R for left and right. And if I can read these, it looks like this is the left pedal here. So to put that on, I actually turn that in a counterclockwise direction and I should be able to thread it mostly on with my fingers. And if that's the correct pedal, it'll go into place and should thread on fairly quickly. So now to take it off, if I cannot get it off because it's rusted, I use my liquid wrench and I just spray it right here on the threads. 
So in there where the pedal meets the crank, I would spray my, my liquid wrench. I take my 15 millimeter wrench and notice I'm turning it clockwise. I turn it clockwise to take that pedal off. That is the way that it would normally tighten, but in this case we use it to loosen the pedal. And my 15 millimeter wrench should remove that pedal and it comes off. The pedals, I only need to take one pedal off. I took them both off earlier today. So um, it's not necessary to remove the pedal on the right hand side for this particular uh, conversion. Then the next thing is that, I don't know if you can see it very clearly there, but there's a bolt right here. And that's just a retaining bolt. This is what I need my crescent wrench for. So I'll take my crescent wrench, I'll size it up to that bolt, and again, I turn it in the clockwise direction to loosen it. Once it's loose, you'll probably need to torque down on it a little bit harder than that. I had loosened it already. Oops, the bolt comes off. Underneath that bolt, there should be a washer. And that washer comes off. Keep those handy. Lastly, I'll need my regular head screwdriver for this part. There is a, what is called a spanner bolt. There's a bolt here, or a nut here, that actually holds the bearings in place. And that particular nut has two little slots on it. So I take my regular screwdriver and I put it in one of the slots and I turn it in the clockwise direction. And I just keep doing this as I spin it around to loosen it up. And eventually I should be able to get my fingers on that to loosen it up. But that's what the regular head screwdriver is for. Now notice that I'm holding the crank in place. I don't want those bearings to go everywhere. So I'll lay the bike back down on the ground here. I'll keep those bearings from rolling all over the place. And I'll take that all the way off. Once that's all the way off now, I should have my bearing uh, retainer, a washer, and then what is the lock nut. So three parts to that. And now, there's a bearing inside of there. I'll just use my regular head screwdriver to very gently pull that out. The bearing race will come out. I shouldn't need to pry that out. I should just need to get started. And then I can use my fingers. And there's my bearing race set that aside and now to pull the crank out it just takes some wiggling to get it going in the right direction. You may need to loosen the rear wheel and loosen that chain up so that you can pull this out but once you have it I just work the crank around a little bit and again this is the tricky part because it's got to fit through there just right. there. And notice my bearings fell out. That's why we put the towel down. Now, to keep it all straight, just to make sure we understand how it goes back together. One tip here. Whenever you take something apart like this, take lots of pictures of it so you remember how it goes back together. There's a flat side of the bearing race and then there's the part, the round side of the bearing race. In this case, it's the flat side of the bearing race that goes to the outside. So the ball bearings actually face into the bicycle. I take my second bearing race and now my ball bearings should be facing each other on the crank. I take my retainer nut, I put it back into place and I have to turn it counterclockwise to tighten it and that way it will all stay together. I won't be missing any parts when I go to put this together. My bearings won't be rolling all over the place. I take my washer or my spacer as, as uh, some mechanics will call it, put that into place and take my lock nut, put that on, and I turn that counterclockwise to tighten it. At this point, I can put my pedals back on, just loosely fingered, you know, tighten them with my fingers so that they are all together. I won't do that for now, but I'll do that later. And now I'm pretty much done, except I've got this problem with the chain. The chain is just kind of hanging there and it's in the way. So I can do a couple of things with my chain to keep it out of the way. One, I've done this already because I have the chain tool. I've actually just pressed it apart and I can take the chain off very easily. If you don't have the chain tool or if you don't have the time to do that, 
um, you can take your 15 millimeter wrench and it should be fairly easy to uh, use that 15 millimeter wrench to get the nuts off the rear tire. That's the nut for the uh, for the training wheels that used to be on here. And nothing special about these nuts. They loosen and they're both loosen in the counterclockwise direction. Now I'm going to take the nut off. And I don't need to take it off, I guess. I just need to loosen it so that I can move this uh, the tire, the wheel back. The wheel should move back here. Oh, I forgot one bit. There is a coaster brake set back here, and to loosen that up, I have to use a Phillips head uh, screwdriver to loosen that coaster brake. That screw comes apart. And now that wheel should slide off, and it does, and I can take my chain, and I simply take my chain and I slide it all the way up to the front, just like that. And now I can take my chain, and I can literally just wrap it around like that so that it's up and out of the way. I take duct tape and I wrap it around there to just keep it out of the way and to keep the kids pants from getting greasy. If I really want to save my paint job I can simply um, uh, wrap the paint first, the painted surface with the duct tape, then put this on. Electrical tape also works fairly well for this. So there, it's up and out of the way. Uh, it's best to go up and over rather than under, that way the, the chain stays out of the way for sure. And then my wheel would go back on, I would tighten it up, and there, there's my balance bike. Ready to go. Uh, this nut here, if you want to adjust the seat height, typically on a balance bike the seat is very low. And so there's my adjustment nut. It's a 13 millimeter nut for this bike. I loosen it up, I put the seat in, and it goes in. One other word, if you go to a bike shop, you can buy two products that are well worth it if you have kids who have bikes. One, uh, this is from an online company called Bike Nash Bar. It is a chain lubrication oil. Do not use 3-in-1 oil or WD-40 on your bicycle chains. They collect dirt and they wear them out and your kids will complain that their bikes are noisy and rusty and um, the chains won't last and they'll have prob they may even end up with problems just pedaling the bike. This is, uh, so use an actual chain loop. They're not expensive, $5 for the bottle and it lasts. I have six kids and my own bike that I maintain, I ride a couple thousand miles a year. This will last me 10 years. I haven't bought chain loop. This is the first time I bought chain loop in 10 years. The other is that for nuts and bolts that you put back together, any of them, you should use a Teflon grease. This is a bicycle specific grease made by the company Finish Line. This tube is now, I don't know, 12 or 13 years old. I have completely rebuilt five or six bikes and I'm still not out of grease. And again, this costs about $10. But any bolt or screw that you put back into your bike, like the threads for your pedals or the threads for your crank, just give them a little dab of, and like even in here on your, for where your pedals go back in, give them a little dab of the Teflon grease. You will not have to deal with rusty bolts again on your bike. Little secret from the bike shop. And before you adjust that seat, pull the seat all the way out, put the same grease in the tube and on the bike seat post, and you won't have to deal with a rusty seat. So any bolt on your bicycle you can use this for and it's, it'll do a great job keeping the rust away. And there you go. There's your balance bike.